We started this project in March 2017. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul the Inventory King. We're doing a video today on highlights of my fish room build from the start to present day. So the next 20 minutes are going to be over two years of footage. Let's do it. All right, everybody, let's do this. The fish room build in 20 minutes. So we're starting off at the very beginning. As you can see, it is a brown room with a big old hole in the wall. I got that patched up with some drywall and mud, sanding it down to prep it for paint. Adding uh, some caulking and stuff in areas where it's going to need to be sealed better. I really wanted to try to keep this room as sealed as possible. Now it's all about getting the room primed. As you can see, the old color was bleeding through quite a bit. I think it might have been an oil base. And now we're throwing the color up, some last little bit of touches, last little touch-ups. But here is what it is looking like so far. So this was the beginning stages of the fish room build. Now we got some 40 gallon aquariums, got a rack from the hardware store that fits perfectly um, in the fish room and the tanks fit on it perfectly. Those were the 125 gallon stands. Now we are setting up the sink and digging our drain line, as you can see, and we have the fresh water coming in. Here's where all of everything comes from outside into the shop area. Now getting the pipe laid in, getting everything put back as it should be, getting a drain hole in the shop set. And we're gonna test it now. And there you go, water flow. Now what we need to do is work on getting the actual lines for fresh water into the fish room. So that is going to be a nice size project because I'm running PVC. I probably could have done something like uh, PEX, but at that time I used PVC, which worked really well for me for the space that I had. And that's just what I decided to go with. Now we are in the fish room, getting it all put together. What you've seen before was inside my shop where I was able to run the sink. Getting everything put together, using a level because I wanted it to be as level as possible, but there you go. And this is what it looks like behind it. So they come down and then there's valves that go to each tank so that I can fill it up once I drain them. And that's on both sides. And then I got a shut off valve right there. So if I ever want to shut off one side of the room, I can. Next step is building the drain line that I attach to the tanks and the rack. So you can see as I'm doing that here, this is what I use uh, to hook up to the spa pump which is in the corner. Now I got that on all the tanks in here so that we can utilize a powerful pump to pull the water out. And we're gonna do a test right now. You can see it's pulling the water out of the tanks. And yeah, this is a sped up video, but it does a really good job of pulling water out really fast. There you go, the next one, we're just kind of going through it all and testing it out, seeing how it works. And as you can see, it is working perfectly. All in all, I am really happy with the system, how it works. It pulls out water very quick, makes doing water changes a breeze. And um, like I said, I couldn't be happier that that is what I decided to do to start off the fish room. This was back when I had a bunch of haps inside the fish room. This was quite some time ago, but 
yeah, that's what this video is all about is putting this fish room together in 20 minutes. There's the spa pump that did all the hard work. Good stuff, guys, good stuff. Next, we are working on getting aquariums for a good price, cleaning them, re-siliconing them, all that stuff that you can do to get a large tank for a good price. This was a 125 gallon tank that I believe I paid either 100 or $125 for it. To buy them brand new, you're gonna be spending 400 bucks or so, give or take. And uh, we got all of the old silicone off. Now we're using the rubbing alcohol to clean the glass, lining up everywhere with the tape so it's a nice, clean joint. Then after that, you work on pulling it all off and you wanna do it fairly quick after you get everything set. Now we're getting a paint roller and the paint to paint the back glass, to paint the trim. There you go, check it out. Is it perfect? No, is it perfect for when you have a bunch of tanks and you wanna save some money? Absolutely. There you go, look at that turned in from an old gross tank to something nice. Then one thing that we did was set up some Inkbird temperature controllers to be able to help monitor our temperature and control it so that our heaters are not running all the time. It was a nice investment, something that worked well for me personally. This was just a setup process where it's all at. Now we need lights lights that are gonna go on the 40 gallon breeders. We got six of them. We're setting them up, flipping them on. As you can see, they do a decent job. Would I have gone brighter? Yes. Now in the winter time, as you can see, things are definitely looking different. I'm in a jacket now, but I talked to my buddy James Largo and he said that this is what he uses to help keep the temperature up in the room and I got it and it was a very nice thing to have in the winter time, kept the room warm, which meant I didn't have to have the heaters on. I had them on, but I had the temperatures lower, so if anything failed, those would kick back on. Now this is a Inkbird uh, temp controller again. Now this was for ambient temperature. I used it to control the heater. It worked really well. Now, let's take a look at the air system in the fish room. Central air, as you can see, one inch pipe. I used thin wall pipe and all of the joints and everything uh, was glued. Let it sit for a while, then aired it out. And the air system is really, really great. Now, as time has gone on, I definitely wanted to improve my water change system. So it was time to add a automated water change system. So the first thing I needed to do was drill the aquariums so that we could put bulkheads in place to overflow the water out when we're filling the tanks back up. When you're doing this, make sure you have a constant water source on the glass where you are drilling. As you can see, that is what I did with the water inlets coming into the tank. So definitely needs to be wet. Now we're outside. What are we doing? We need to build a drain system for the automatic water change system. Since this is a gravity fed drain, I needed to set up a new one and I could not utilize the spa pump drains because those are pressurized versus this being gravity. We are getting all the bulkheads put into place so we could put the tubing that goes behind the tanks. Now it's about getting the drain line out of the building, trench it over to a section that'll work, make sure that everything is working well so we're topping off a tank here so that it drains out. You can see there it was at the top of the bulkhead, right there, see that? Now let's go ahead and head back out and we're gonna see if it works, and it does. So we know that the drain system is working. Now it's time to backfill everything that we trenched so that it looks good and is back to normal. Now the other step to an automatic water change system is going to be your valves on a timer. 
what we're doing here is building a manifold for the valves for the auto water change system. Now, if you want to know how I did this, I have detailed videos in my playlists where you can see how I built the automatic water change system. You can see the videos on how we got the fish room to where it was more detailed. But this was just a look at where it was and look at where it is type video. And I was able to go to some of my local plumbing stores where it wasn't your big box. So they had some decent deals on some stuff. A lot of these items I did get online. There will be some affiliate links in the description if you're interested in checking some of this stuff out. But again, building the manifold was a fun project, something I really enjoyed. And again, there's detailed videos on how to do this, um, what parts to get, how we set it up, and all that good stuff. As you can see, it's a lot of moving parts in this clip. But there it is, the manifold for the auto water change system. Now we are doing water lines, bringing them in from outside again because we need new water lines to come in for the system. Getting it all put into place, nice and level. Now what we're doing is we're building the lines off of the manifold and running our zones. One thing I would definitely suggest is take your time, make sure you air the room out, the glue does get pretty intense. Now this is inside the shop where we have the water coming in and out. So the two left ones are the drain and the spa pump system. The right one was the auto water change system line. Now in order to make this work, we need a controller. We installed a brand new plug. We got the controller mounted and now it's all about getting the drip lines set into place for the system. Then we need to wire it all up. We need to wire the zones up to the sprinkler wire, and then we need to wire the sprinkler wire into the controller. Again, detailed videos if you were interested. Right there, we were setting the zones up. Now, as you can see, everything is plumbed. Everything looks good. We got, again, the two left ones are for the old system which I can still use, and one's for a drain, which was that one right there. And then the right side, that's for the auto water change system. That one always stays on so that when the controller tells the valves to open up, the water will flow right on through. Awesome stuff. Definitely evolved from when we first started the fish room. I gotta say that this automatic water change system is probably the greatest thing I've ever built personally because of just how much time this saves. You still have to clean out your detritus, but this does an amazing job making sure that water stays as clean as possible. We did a little uh, clean out here so that I can have water on demand if I need it. Uh, now what we're doing is we're testing the water flow through the drip line so I know how to set the timers. Now, as more time went on, I wanted to add more aquariums to the fish room. What I wanted to do was 75 gallon tanks on metal stands, but I could not find metal stands that would work. So we are building our own stand for the 75 gallon rack and we're doing a dado style construction. Definitely a very strong construction that does a good job. So we get that all cut out, pull all the little chunks out, then you're gonna get a file and file it down so it's nice and smooth. Again, I have videos on all of this in detail. Putting it together now, getting all the screws, putting it in, setting it up, all that good stuff. Now I'm getting some caulking and I'm covering all of the screw holes so it looks nice getting it painted to match the room, moving it in place, and making sure everything will fit. The goal was triple rack. It isn't going to work because I needed space for myself to get in there and clean the tanks. So I turned it into a dual 75. You can see we got one there, one there, 
really good stuff. Now this video, what we're doing is we're actually painting the tanks. This clip was before when we got the other part done, but it doesn't matter, it's still close enough within the timeline of how we did everything. Then I went and built the piping into the spa pump system here because again, I wanted to have that available when I needed it, which was important tapped into the fresh water coming in for the spa pump system so we could fill the tanks up on demand when we need to. Now over here, we're working on our airline and what we're doing is we're drilling some holes and we're getting some airline valves put in place so that we can add some more sponges to this tank. Works well. Now, those 75 gallon tanks that we were working on, they are tempered glass tanks. I could not drill those tanks because they would have shattered if I tried. So I got in touch with these shops about their overflows. They were kind enough to send these out. I have a full video on how we set this up, going into detail. But what I did was is I utilized these overflows as my drilled overflow. So it's not drilled, but it's gonna act like that so we can get the rack on the auto water change system. There's the lines going into the gravity drain. Now we need to prime it. It's about getting this loop in there and then you got to pull water through by sucking on the hose and it gets it all going. As you can see, everything's primed. We're gonna flip the water on here and you're gonna see how it all flows. There we go, filling it up. Now it's overflowing. So the point is, is it stays primed and it allows me to add this rack onto the auto water change system, which was big because otherwise I would have to do manual changes on this one with the spot pump system. But this allows me to take advantage of all the hard work I did by building the auto water change system and I'm using that side there, bringing the lines in and adding them to here. Now we're getting closer to present day. I got a IBC tote and I turned it into an above ground grow out pond. What we did was we cut it, we cleaned it, we added bleach, scrubbed it down, let it soak. You never know what are in these. You want to buy food grade, but you still want to make sure that you bleach it and scrub it because who knows what's been in there. And then I soaked it and scrubbed it down with some Seachem Safe. Again, full videos on all of the clips in here in my video tab, in my playlist, if you're interested in taking a look. Now what we're doing is insulating it because this is going inside the shop area, which in the winter time gets cold. So I need to utilize this grow out space by insulating it so I could keep it running during the winter time. Now got these sponge filters, they're humongous sponge filters, getting them set, putting them together, double stacking them to go into the pond. Now we're filling it up manually through the system and measuring how much water goes in here. Turning it on, testing it out, all that good stuff. Then we got some of this Turbo Start from Fritz. This is a refrigerated product. So if you decide to buy the refrigerated product, definitely make sure you're around to get it into the fridge as soon as it gets shipped to you if you don't have any local. But it cycles the aquarium really fast, which was beneficial for me. Now, as you saw before, this was not on the auto water change system. What do we need to do? We need to take advantage of the auto water change system by adding a T to the fill-in line, add a valve, which we're doing here. The whole point of this is to be able to set the grow out pond on the auto water change system so that it gets its daily water changes. So we got the manifold made and you definitely wanna make sure you have a pressure regulator so that it will reduce the pressure of the water so it doesn't blow the valves off of the manifold. 
drilling the above ground grow out pond so that when it is on the auto water change system, it will drain into the sink. We are running some wire now over the garage door so that we can run the line from the sprinkler valve to the controller, which is what we're doing right now. This is zone five. You can see it's working. We're coming to an end. What a journey it has been so far. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. What do you guys think of where we are today versus where we were in 2017? If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell. Please comment, share, all that good stuff. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Stay tanked.